First, I must confess that over the last few years, I've been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I've almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in the stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I can't agree with you with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically feels he can set the timetable for another man's freedom. That, of course, is Martin Luther King Jr. in 1963 in his famous letter from Birmingham jail. Honestly, this text is a work of philosophy, and I'm not sure enough people treat it that way. I intend to over the coming months. But honestly, I'm not sure how much of this translates to the present moment, which is a bonkers claim. Let me back that up. Now, of course, some of this does map one to one in terms of the white reaction to the Black Lives Matter broadly construed movement broadly construed. Many white people just straight up said like, well, I guess I support what you're doing, but like, don't kneel on the field and don't have these protests like this and MLK wouldn't have this. This maps one to one. And that's part of why this quote resonates. But I think we need to dig a little deeper. Following January 6th, Amanpour and Co. interviewed Robert Pape, who discussed the motivations for people in that attack. The greatest commonality in that attack was not age or socioeconomic status, but the belief in the great replacement theory. If you haven't heard or you are exhausted of hearing of them, there was another mass shooting this weekend in Texas. NPR is reporting and NBC is verifying that he held extreme far-right beliefs, the Great Replacement Theory. As Maddow explains, we are on the one-year anniversary of the Buffalo shooting that was also motivated by white supremacy. The El Paso massacre was similarly racially motivated. This is not the white moderate. Unless you think I'm throwing statistical anomalies at you, the FBI itself concluded that under President Donald Trump, hate crimes rose to the highest number in 28 years. It's not an accident. It is by design because it is more politically profitable for Republicans to stoke racial resentment among the lower classes than to have them unite and demand the economic benefits that we have earned for this country. So it is not just the white moderate. It is a new rise of far-right extremism that is happening in front of our eyes. Pick a side.